The travel trouble continues for Canada's airline industry as a new survey ranks Canada's two biggest airlines below average for customer satisfaction. Now, this comes ahead of a looming strike by over 1,000 WestJet pilots across the country next week. The poll was conducted by consumer analytics company J.D. Power. WestJet and Air Canada were placed fifth and eighth, respectively, out of 11 airlines in the economy class. Now, this comes as a major strike, poised to take place as early as May 16th, threatens the long weekend and the summer vacation plans of Canadians. Over 1,000 WestJet pilots under the Airline Pilots Association are demanding a pay increase and are pointing to the airline's high turnover rate. Well, joining us now to give us more insight into this looming strike and the rights of passengers amid it is Mr. John Graddock, an aviation expert and lecturer at McGill University. Mr. Graddock, welcome back to Forum Daily. My pleasure to be here. All right, so we, so we saw demonstrations already held outside of Toronto, Calgary, and Vancouver airports on Monday. We saw hundreds of WestJet pilots there. Um, so what sort of impact did the smaller demonstration have on travel this week? Well, I think these smaller demonstrations are more informational pickets. I think the union is uh, trying to get you and me on their side, and for general, you know, the general public to be able to uh, sympathize with the uh, with the plight of uh, WestJet pilots, uh, and it, you know that's a hard sell. You know, pilots are are not underpaid; uh, they're not secretarial; they're not nurses. Um, they get paid good money, uh, average salary somewhere around eighty five thousand dollars a year gross and some of them go up to over 200. So these guys are, are these guys and women are very well paid. Um, they think they're underpaid because their Canada's wages are a little higher than what WestJets are. But the union has convinced the WestJet pilots that their ability to in fact get Canadian pilots wages up to uh, the recently renegotiated US pilot wage is feasible, it's doable, and that would represent about a 30 to 35% increase in salaries for WestJet pilots. And now, meanwhile, WestJet is warning that these wages that the ALPA is proposing could affect the affordability of its travel rates. So how could a potential wage increase for pilots trickle down to passengers of WestJet? You and me are going to pay. We're going to pay, you know, that's going to be right down to our airfares. Um, You know, the the airlines can absorb this type of increase. Uh, Wages are the highest category of expenses they have, along with fuel. So between fuel and, and, and labor, that's over 50% of their costs. So anytime you have a bump up in labor costs such as this, and it, it will ripple down through the organization, I have no doubt about it, uh, to other categories, whether it's station attendants or flight attendants, uh, they'll ask for the same type of leverage. So you know the, the cost of labor is going up, and that cost of labor as the cost of fuel is going up, so be prepared to pay higher costs for your higher fares and uh, new wages. And can passengers maybe expect to be compensated in the event of cancellations or delays next week? Uh, what are the rights that they should know about, Mr. Braddock? It's going to be tricky. Uh, I think that what you're looking at is really a situation where um, the air passenger protection rights are there to pr- compensate passengers for operational delays and operational cancellations. Uh, when you talk about labor disruptions, and this is a major labor disruption, uh, it's really kind of a gray area in the in the APPRs as to what the compensation level should be. Uh, and it, you know, some people would argue that this labor disruption is out of the airline's control, but it necessarily isn't. It's management deciding not to pursue a certain action. So it's going to be a little tricky. WestJet is going to have to scramble pretty quickly to kind of figure out what are they going to do with those passengers? And, you know, if the first set of passengers will be those that are traveling in the first week of the strike between the 16th and the 23rd. And uh, WestJet will be getting in touch with those passengers and letting them know what the travel options are. And is there any way that travelers could potentially prepare for this looming strike? Not really. Um, you know, I think that, you know, you, you, you've bought tickets that are non-refundable. You've bought tickets that have conditions associated with them. So there's not much that you can do if you have those types of tickets. You're in the hands of WestJet. WestJet uh, should, for all intents and purposes, protect its brand, protect its value in the marketplace, and should offer you alternative transportation uh, arranged for by WestJet on other carriers. There's a lot of capacity in the Canadian aviation market now, uh, and it should not be a problem trying to accommodate WestJet's passengers on other carriers.
From the sounds of it, we're in for a bumpy start to the travel season. Mr. Gradick, I'm sure we'll be talking more about this throughout uh, the next few weeks. But thank you again for your time today. My pleasure. Have a great evening. Take care.